Guys, I can't believe that I haven't saw this video already. After all, this video is 12 years old. It has a 1.3 million views, so it's been viewed a lot of times. It's been up for 12 years, and I'm just now seeing this video. I mean, why is that? It's amazing to me. I've watched so many videos on YouTube, and this just popped up this morning, and I watched this, and I was like, wow, that puts everything in perspective, especially the things we're seeing right now armed Chinese troops in Texas and we're bringing them in right across the southern border like I talked about in my last video but this is talking about you know the military industrial complex and how we are invaders and so many different nations and the things we do there and why those people actually hate the United States of America and a lot of people think that the United States has every right to go into foreign nations and take resources to do whatever they want to do because we're the United States and we're here to help. We're here to bring democracy to your country when you didn't ask for democracy. Big money in the military industrial complex. But this video explains so much. A book I suggest you all read is War is a Racket by Smidley Butler. Great book. You can get it in you can get it in an audio book and it's couple of hours all it is to listen to that it's pretty short i think it's like 60 or 70 pages and it talks about the military industrial complex our wars aren't fought for freedom and democracy our wars are fought for the military industrial complex taking resources from other nations occupying other nations interest for big corporate conglomerates that's what our wars are all about. It's not about fighting for freedom and democracy and all that bunch of bullshit we've been told over the years. It's for making the wealthy more wealthy at, on the backs of the poor, pretty much, because the people who join the military are usually middle class or in poverty, so they join the military. They join to get education because they can't afford to pay for their education and things like that in a lot of cases not every case so they join the military but the wealthy elite their children their family doesn't usually go into the military but they don't care one bit to send your loved ones to die on foreign soil so they can get richer but let's expand this out here i'm going to expand this out and i want to mute my microphone because it'll be picking up the audio from the computer <coughs> excuse me from the computer and the microphone and that messes everything up so I'm going to mute right now. Imagine for a moment, a moment that somewhere in the middle of Texas there was a large foreign military base. Say Chinese or Russian. Imagine that thousands of armed foreign troops were constantly patrolling American streets in military vehicles. Imagine they were here under the auspices of keeping us safe or promoting democracy or protecting their strategic interests. Imagine that they operated outside of U.S. law and that the Constitution did not apply to them. Imagine that every now and then they made mistakes or acted on bad information and accidentally killed or terrorized innocent Americans, including women and children, most of the time with little or no repercussions or consequences. Imagine that they set up checkpoints on our soil and routinely searched and ransacked entire neighborhoods of homes. Imagine if Americans were fearful of these foreign troops and overwhelmingly thought America would be better off without their presence. Imagine if some Americans were so angry about them being in Texas that they actually joined together to fight them off in defense of our soil and sovereignty because leadership and government refused or were unable to do so. Imagine that those Americans were labeled terrorists or insurgents for their defensive actions and routinely killed or captured or tortured by the foreign troops on our land. Imagine that the occupier's attitude was that if they just killed enough Americans, the resistance would stop. But instead, for every American killed, ten more would take up arms against them, resulting in perpetual bloodshed. Imagine if most of the citizens of the foreign land also wanted these troops to return home. Imagine if they elected a leader who promised to bring them home and put an end to this horror. Imagine if that leader changed his mind once he took office. The reality is that our military presence on foreign soil is as offensive to the people that live there 
as armed Chinese troops would be if they were stationed in Texas. Texas. Shutting down, down military bases, bases and seeking to deal with other, other nations, nations threats. with threats and violence is not isolationism, it is, is the opposite. Opening ourselves up to friendship, honest trade and diplomacy is the foreign policy of peace and prosperity. It is the only foreign policy that will not bankrupt us in the short order as our current actions most definitely will. I share the disappointment of the American people in the foreign policy rhetoric coming from the administration. The sad thing is, our foreign policy will change eventually, as Rome's did, when all budgetary and monetary tricks to fund it are exhausted. Wasn't that awesome? That is definitely something to think about and something to consider and another way of looking at things and seeing things as they actually are from the eyes of someone else. To make matters worse, you know, all the wars we've been in over the last, say, 75 years, all the police actions and things like that have been started because of usually false flags or complete just lies, false flags like, you know, weapons of mass destruction, the Gulf of Tonkin, and all kinds of different things has happened to get us into different wars. That's the way they usually always start. False flags, lies from our politicians, from the media, because they want to have the, the backing of the American people. 9-11, weapons of mass destruction, they want to have the backing of the American people. They want people to volunteer for the military, and a lot of people did, you know, after 9-11 because they saw what happened, and the blame was put on certain parties like Saddam Hussein and, Afghan and uh, Iraq and uh, in Afghanistan, Saddam bin Laden in Afghanistan. Saddam bin Laden was actually a U.S. CIA asset before when he was fighting against Russia in Afghanistan, but then, like the United States does, they turned on Osama bin Laden, so that happens a lot. So, the wars started through false flags, through lies, to get the backing of the American people and the support of the American people. And they would tell you that we're going to defend freedom and democracy when it's all really about power, control, gaining resources, and making money for the military-industrial complex. If there's no war, the military-industrial complex doesn't make any money. So they have to have war. They have to be in a constant state of war so they can keep the profits rolling in. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below about the video. It was pretty awesome, I think. Give me your thoughts. If you liked it, give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'm the Creek Warm Matter, and I'll see you all in the next video, hopefully.